Okay, so you guys have been asking for it. You guys have been asking for an S plan set up on a nest. So that's what we're doing in this video. Now you'll notice that there's three zone valves on this. So I'll show you how to do a normal S plan with two zone valves. And then I'll also show you how to add extra ones for if you want to split upstairs heating, downstairs heating, if you want to add underfloor heating. Now, this is the wiring center. You'll notice that I strip all of it out. Reason being, I'm going to try and make this video as simple as possible. When I first started learning and people tried to explain S plan and Y plans to me, I just could not understand it. It was too much going on. So I'm really going to try and make this as quick but as simple as possible. So let's get into it. So if you take a look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see a Nest S plan wiring diagram that I've made. I'm literally just going to be following this diagram. It is really simple. If you want to see more diagrams like that, I've got them on my website. If not, I'm going to show you in this video anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is connect the mains power to this. So one, two and three is going to be our live neutral and earth. Now, I didn't know I was going to be making this video. It was just a last minute opportunity. So I do only have four core cable. So I will be using brown as live, black as neutral and yellow and green as earth. But I'll be taping everything accordingly to make sure it's all right. So to keep things basic, number one is where all of our lives are going to go. Two is where all of our neutrals are going to go and three is where all of our earths are going to go. So now that we've got that set up, we can take our nest hub out of the box and we can also mount that to the wall as well. Now, one thing I do want to say is all of this on the wall is just temporary. So there's going to be a partition in the wall and they are going to have to move all of this. So a lot of my cables are just going to be loose. So then they can then just move it over without having to extend any cables. So if it does look a bit messy outside the wiring center, that's why. So in terms of knowing how much cable to strip off, what I'll do is I'll measure the furthest cable. So you can see if I put the cable here, the furthest one's going to be the earth. And then I can cut down the other cables accordingly. So that's the earth in. Just need to do the live and neutral now. Now, ideally for this, it is best to use a five core cable because you do need five cables coming out of this going to the wiring center. Again, I've only got four core because I didn't know I was going to be making this video. So I'll be using two cables to get the five cables from the nest to the wiring center. But you'll see what I'm talking about. So then what we need to do is we need to put a link between L and number two. And that will give us power for our heating. So we also need a link into number five as well. So there's two ways you can do it. You can put a link between L and five. But I find it's hard to put three cables in L. So if you just put a link in two and five, it does the same thing. So the live neutral and earth we just put into the nest, we're then going to run those cables into one, two and three, because again, they're our live neutral and earth. OK, so that's three out of five cables done for the nest. We have our final two cables now. So those final two cables are going to go into five and six on the wiring center and they're going to go into three and six on the nest. So you can see I've done a black cable into number six on the nest. Now I just need to do this gray cable into number three. So now that's pretty much all the wiring done now for the nest. We can do T1 and T2 later, that's not really important, but that's the main foundations for the nest done. So that gray cable that was in number three on the nest, we're gonna put that same gray cable into number five on the wiring center. And you can see I found a way to hook cables behind the wiring center. So I'm also going to tidy up all of this so it's a bit neater as well. So now it's a bit easier to see. I put my blue tape on the black cable to show it's neutral. And I've also done number six on the wiring center that went to number six on the nest. So that's it. Nest is pretty much all done now. We can focus on doing the zone valves. So we start of our central heating zone valve. Again, I like to make it really simple in terms of how I look at zone valves. You've got your earth, which is the green cable, neutral, and this gray cable, I like to look at it as our live. So that is our live neutral earth, and then these two are going to be our switches. So these are our cables for our zone valves I put at the bottom here. So that gray cable, I put brown tape on it to basically show it's live, neutral earth, and now we need to focus on these two other cables, which is our switch. So that brown cable that comes from the zone valve, we're going to join it up with number three on the nest. So in terms of where that connects in the wiring center is number five. We're then going to put the final orange cable into number 10. And that's it. That is one zone valve done. Really simple. So again, we're going to do the next zone valve now, which is hot water. Again, the same. Live, neutral earth, those first three cables. And then we then need to sort out those last two cables. So for the hot water zone valve, 
the brown cable is going to go into number 8 and the orange cable is going to go into number 10. And that's it, both of the zone valves are all wired up now. Next we have our cylinder stamp. So if you take the front case off and you look inside, you'll see a terminal that says C in it and you have no cables going to it, which is that one on the left. And you also see a number one, which has no cables going to it, which is the one all the way on the right. So I've put a gray cable going into number one on the cylinder stat. I then put the black cable going into C on the cylinder stat. I'll put the cable clamp after this is just to show you. That black cable then goes to number six on the wiring center, which then also goes to number six on the nest hub as well. So in terms of how it all works, when you call for hot water, it sends power out of terminal six in the hub then goes to terminal 6 in the wiring center. That black cable then goes to C in the stat. That gray cable that was connected to number 1 then connects to number 8 in the wiring center. That then sends power to the brown cable in the zone valve. That activates the motor, sends power to the orange, and then that will then tell the boiler to fire up. I know that can be quite a lot. You can rewind the video, watch it a few times. But now we're going to wire up the boiler's cables. So we've got our normal live neutral earth here that we're going to connect into the left and then this is going to be our switch cable that's going to connect all of our zone valves. So you can see I've done our live neutral earth for the boiler cable now. We just have to sort out this grey cable which is the switch cable that goes into number 10. Now inside the boiler what we have to do is put our live neutral earth in a normal live neutral earth terminals. That grey switch cable is then going to go into the purple RT. Once you've done that, take the link out in the 24 volt RT, which is the one on the left right there. Now these two cables are the last two cables that go into the hub. They go into T1 and T2, and they're gonna run to the actual Nest thermostat that you can control on the wall. That T1 and T2 cable then connects into the base of that thermostat. So that's it. If you had a two port S plan system, that is everything connected, everything's all done. But like I said, I've got a third zone valve, which is for our underfloor heating. I need to connect that up. And again, we're going to do our normal split to make it basic. Blue is neutral, green is earth, and gray is going to be our permanent live. And then we've got the two switch cables. So I'm going to put brown into number nine. And then the orange cable is going to go into number 10 like it does with all the other orange cables. However, there's no underfloor heating thermostat just yet. So I'm not able to connect that. But as soon as that comes, the person who moves this all over will just put the cable into number 9 from the thermostat. But that's it, pretty much all done. Again, they give you all the links in this as a setup to make it easier for you to space it all out. I've stripped it all out, done it from scratch to try to explain it a little bit better, make it look easier to understand. So I hope that helps. Um, I feel like it definitely would have helped me when I first got started. So let's just go through the motions of setting up the nest. So, firm stats on the wall, I'm about to ask him to turn the power on now and pray nothing blows up. And, moment of truth. All good, everything seems fine. But in terms of this video, literally all I'd done was follow the wiring diagram that I made for S-Plan specifically for Nest. There was a few on the internet about S-Plans, but I couldn't find one specifically for a Nest that was clear. So I made one, that's literally all I've done in this video is follow it. So if you wanna get access to that, you can go to my site. I've got one for a wire plan for a nest as well. In the beginning of Feb, I'll make one for hives as well because I've had a few people ask me that. Um, but yeah, let's quickly go through the settings, set this up and we can get out of this job. So we're gonna click single family, we're then gonna click on entryway because it's basically in the entryway hallway. Then gonna set up time and date, that's all done. Then we're going to set up the equipment, click continue, then going to click system boiler. Now the reason I seem really slow in doing this is because I'm trying to have a conversation with someone else at the same time. Um, so I'm just trying to multitask, which a lot of people say man can't do, I like to think that we can. Um, but yeah, let's click done for that. You can set up the Nest app if you want to. Again, this house is vacant at the moment, so I'm not going to do that. Click finish and that is it. That is everything set up. So now the main thing is, let's test it. Does it work when I click hot water on? Does it turn off? So we're gonna go through that now. So just a quick one before we go into testing, I just wanna talk about this little yellow symbol at the bottom of the screen. So they have a bacteria protection thing, so the hot water automatically kicks in every now and then. So in terms of testing it, it can make you think that the hot water's always on when it's not. 
So in terms of how you turn that off, just for testing, you can turn it back on after if you want to. Go to settings, scroll over to equipment, click continue, then go to bacteria prevention, disable it, click done, go back to the main screen, and you'll see it's gone now. So now you can do your normal testing without things getting in your way. Now in terms of testing, there's no demand at the moment, so all of these should be shut. If I now go to the thermostat and boost the hot water, we should see our hot water zone valve get loose, which it does, perfect. If I now turn the boost off, and then turn the heating up, The hot water zone valve should be firm and shut. The central heating one should be loose, which it is, which is perfect. And now for the last test, I'm going to turn both of them on at the same time and make sure they both open. And it is, everything's working perfect. Again, on the floor heating, can't really test that right now because they haven't got the thermostat and everything I need to set it up. But in terms of the wiring, I know it's a mess. They're building a wall right here so all of this is temporary it's going to get moved to that wall i didn't know if they was going to put it up higher lower so i thought i'd just leave it with more slack and then if they really want they can tidy it up but that's it for this video i tried to strip back the wiring centers to try and make it as basic as possible when you understand it a little bit more then you can use those wiring centers to space it all out and make it easier for you but um any questions let me know in the comments below i'll try to help and i'll see you in the next video